They say car crime is down, that they're winning the war. Maybe. Your radio cassette might be safer than it used to be, but your car definitely isn't. Stolen motors are still big business, and every year, half a million disappear. And get this, over 150,000 of them are never recovered. So what happens to all these hot cars? Well, they sure as hell don't just evaporate into the ether. No. Some get broken up for spares and the bits sold on the black market. Others are rings. That means teams of villains put false chassis numbers and false registration plates on them and sell them on. And others, well, others get cloned. What's cloning? Well, it's the latest form of car crime. It's potentially worth billions of pounds and it is frighteningly easy to do. Cloning means just what it says, making a copy. But when it comes to cars, it means copying the identity of one car and putting it on another. What the cloners do is pick a car that's in limbo, between owners on a garage forecourt or at a car auction. They note down the registration and chassis numbers and then go out and steal an identical model. They get dodgy chassis and registration plates made up, stick them on the stolen motor and presto, it's got a brand new identity. But, and here's the shocking bit, what they then do is they apply to the DVLA for a duplicate registration document using a phony name and address. And nine times out of ten they get it. But they also have a great laugh at the same time. I've got here a DVLA main file record that the police have given us for an application for a duplicate logbook for a cloned car. And the name of the applicant is Iva Dunnett. Iva Dunnett. The car is a Sierra Gear 4x4. The body is a panel van. The propulsion is heavy oil. We are talking a Sierra Gear 4x4 diesel panel van. This is gobbledygook, yet it got through. If it wasn't so tragic, it would be funny. Quite a shock, really, seeing it again after uh, three and a half years. In 1994, Mr. and Mrs. Heaton bought this Toyota Land Cruiser from a private seller for 24 grand, complete with a DVLA registration document. They'd owned it for just five weeks when the police towed it away as a stolen car. I feel bitter towards the DVLA who supplied the registration document to the person who did sell me this car. Because without that document, we wouldn't have bought that car. And when we went to view it, he had everything, you know, the registration document, everything, uh, the chassis number on it, the engine number. This police pound in Cambridgeshire is stuffed with cars whose identities have been changed. But the bit that should bother you most is that if you inadvertently buy a cloned car, you lose both the car and your money. Cruel, but it's the law. The insurance company that has already paid out for the stolen car always retains good title. We tried to negotiate with um, the insurance company. We offered them a fair price for it, um, and they didn't accept. They said that they'd had an higher offer for it. We would have to match the higher offer. I've been paid £24,000. They were asking us to pay another £20,000, which would have meant we'd have paid £44,000 for a car that's been stood on the police compound for three years and three months. And, um, you know, you, you just wouldn't do it. Nobody in the right mind would buy that car back at that price. The Hedens Insurance Company have since told them that they can buy their own Land Cruiser back for only £14,000. Sue Bunyan of Birmingham bought this Honda Civic in October last year. All went well until she opened her post one morning. I received a letter from the then prospective buyer of the car saying that he wanted to know what the history was. And the letter actually quoted my registration number, and obviously I was horrified because that's the car I'm driving at the moment. I telephoned him, the gentleman himself, and he said he'd since bought the car and that um, he was absolutely horrified to believe that the two of us could have identical registration numbers and indeed identical cars. The same colours, the same interior, the same the lot. I believe in my own mind that it was um, the other lady who'd got me wrong car because mine was such a beautiful car. It was running so well, I had all the impression being a good Honda motor car. It left you with a sinking feeling in your stomach, the feeling, oh my God, what's going to happen now? 
you know, all this money we've spent, spent on it, are we going to get it back? What's going to happen? So we were rather very anxious for quite some time. Unluckily for Mr. and Mrs. Kershaw, their Honda was found to have been cloned and was impounded by the police. But the good news is that the garage who sold them the Civic gave them their £7,000 back and even loaned them another car. And when I say cloning is frighteningly easy, I mean it. You can buy a set of number plates from any car accessory shop and chances are you won't need any identification at all. And getting hold of a duplicate chassis number is equally simple. Now all cars have a unique chassis or VIN number and it's usually located on a little aluminium plate on the bulkhead here. But we have managed to buy duplicate aluminium chassis or VIN number plates quite openly from a place called Tag Plate UK. These cost us £35 a piece. Honestly, it is childishly simple. It's not as easy as what you might think. We actually need two forms of identification from the actual applicant, also a copy of the registration document or a purchase receipt. That is our requirement. Then payment is normally made by a visa card or by a cheque. So therefore you've got another form of identification being submitted also. Do your plate have anything to distinguish them from an original? Does it say duplicate chassis plate? Our plates, we believe we're the only manufacturer are actually here supplying the plates out with our company name, which is Tag Plates UK Limited. Um, that is different from the manufacturer's plate, yes, we do. So they can be easily distinguished from the real thing? Easily distinguished, yeah, from the real thing, that's right. But we'd already tested Tag Plates UK's security. Armed with a secret camera, we asked them to supply a plate for a Chrysler Jeep without any obvious Tag Plates UK markings. Basically, that's what that was for the charity. Is that OK? Yeah, fine. And our identification was a rent book bought from a news agent and a form from a post office, both of which we filled in ourselves. Can you put your name address there and sign the bottom for me? Yeah. Now, what would you say if I said we bought a chassis plate from you that doesn't say Tag Plate UK on it, but says Chrysler Corporation? Yeah, that is an old plate which we've had on stock. Um, the, the plate what we're actually supplying now at present, if you see there, are different from the manufacturer's plate. Even so, having visited Tag Plate UK three times, we reckon their security is too easily breached. But the really amazing thing is the DVLA are making it easy too. Getting a duplicate registration document is far too simple. You just send in a form and they send a letter to the present registered keeper giving them 14 days to respond. If they don't, the computer automatically spews out a new document. And since most cloners target cars that are for sale or in ownership limbo, people rarely reply to the letter. And the police say that the amounts of money involved in cloning are huge. As you can imagine, these sort of vehicles that we were dealing with, 4x4 four four transit vans, were worth in excess of £10,000 each. A lot of money was involved in this. Um, and it was quite a, a big operation trying to recover them. And how much money did it all, did it all add up to? Well, in total, we recovered £2.1 million worth. But that is only the value of the ones that we recovered. The, the, the inquiry could have gone on. It was halted, people charged, and we stopped the operation. But it could have gone on to far in excess of that, I'm quite sure. So how do you stop yourself buying a cloned car? Well, it isn't easy, and even dealers get taken in. Rule number one, never ever buy those suspiciously cheap motors from blokes in laybys and car parks for cash. You are asking for trouble. Always pay with a banker's draft or a cheque. That way, there's a trade. And when you actually look at the car, pay particular attention to the chassis and engine numbers. Read them off against the V5 particularly the engine number, because that's the most difficult to falsify. But if you do nothing else, do this. Make sure you check any prospective purchase against HPI or the AA Auto Data check, because if it comes up clean and then later turns out to be cloned, you stand a chance of getting a refund. It is your most powerful line of defense.